is go time. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Chantal Hyde Show. As always, I am super happy to be here, always holding space for you, always wanting your questions because, frankly, it is the conversation that really makes me come alive and makes me thrive because I have answers. It's, I have so many answers for you. And it's rare that a question is going to stump me. So I want to do what I'm going to call a fireside chat tonight, which is basically just kind of catching up on, on what's been going on. Usually I pick like a specific topic and I really just kind of wrap some time around that and sort of really delve into it. But tonight I want to share what's been going on with me because there's been so much happening behind the scenes and I want to apologize for something. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But I also want to know what's on your mind. As always, I want to know what your questions are. Hello, all the you know, people who are out there. I see you popping on. Um, say hello in the comments. Let's get a dialogue going. Type in where you're from. I love that I get people from across Canada. I get people from the US, people from the UK. Um, and it's interesting if I get on earlier in the day, I've got people from Vietnam that are coming on, which is super fun. So Mondays I get on earlier. I go on Instagram around noon, answer questions. Hello, I see some love, loving it so much. Um, so if there's anything that's on your mind, if you have any questions about anything, whether you're single or getting over a breakup and getting into a relationship, are you dating? Hi, Rebecca. Um, if you're dating, if you are in a relationship, is there a fight that you're having and you're wondering who is right about this fight? Let's talk about that. Let's let's settle your mind, let's settle your soul, let's kind of get your love life rolling in the right direction, that is my purpose. So I, I did a, a short video today and the videographer said, you know, who should come to you? Like first and foremost, it's like obviously everybody should, but who really should come to you? And, and what came out of my mouth was single moms because you know, basically we are monkeys designed to imitate and when you have children, they are absolutely watching you and they're observing what you're doing and they will follow your example. This is why people who have trouble in relationships typically come from families where they watch their parents struggle and there was, you know, abuse going on or um, disinterest, you know, whatever it was. So if there's trouble going on in the home, there's such a big chance that a young person will then have trouble in their own relationships. So when parents come to me, it absolutely makes my day because I know I'm not only affecting and helping them, but I'm also affecting and helping their kids. So that to me is absolutely huge. So A number one, bring me parents because I want to create role models out of parents. Um, and then actually when he said, you know, what's your ideal client? I said, anybody who's going to do what I tell them to do because I have a 100% success rate when, uh, when people follow my advice. There is not a single person who has done what I've told them to do who hasn't come back to me and said what I did worked. Even if, if the only thing they do is writing their perfect man list. I've had this happen recently where somebody did one session with me and I'm like, yes, get on meditation and clarify what it is that you're looking for because the universe can only deliver what you know you want and need and deserve. And so she did her perfect man list, tucked it away in a drawer, met somebody and took that list out recently and went check, 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 because the universe is reading you at all times. And this antenna is sending out signals and I want you to attract the right person for you. Um, so let's talk about what's been going on. So this apology that I wanna to make to you guys is in relation to my blog. I wanna say I am so sorry that I haven't written anything new in my blog recently. It's been about a month actually since I put something up on my blog because I feel pulled in so many different directions. And, you know, I talk about gender differences and I talk about how many words a day people process. So 
women, it's about 20,000 words a day. Men, it's about five to 7,000 words a day. And I've actually been commissioned to ghostwrite books. So even though I'm not writing my own books, you know, at, at this time, because I've done eight books and, and when I was finished my eighth, my mind said, okay, now it's time to unleash all of this out into the world and, and just get in on marketing, really spread the message and get people to understand who I am, what it is that I do, what I teach, how, and you know, how it's going to work for them. So that was great. So I finished writing my eighth book. My mind was clear did a few blog posts, really got into marketing. Marketing, if you don't know, it is a daily, daily thing. If you want to gain some momentum and then keep that traction going. Hi, Deanna, hi, Joe. Um, and so I really was focusing in on marketing and that was great. My book sales shot through the roof. I was hitting record sales month over month. And then people started coming out of the woodwork and saying, hey, I'm starting a business or I've got this business and I want to, I want to you know, make a book part of what I offer people for them to understand what it is that I do and to see how qualified I am to do this. And so I've had people now popping up and going, can you write my book for me? Can you go write my book for me? Which is basically writing a book and having someone else put their name on it. And you will never know what I've written that is mine that has someone else's name on it. I'm not going to tell you. But you know, now that I'm, I'm back into book writing, I'm fine. And, and in addition to that, making these videos, so twice a week, getting live on camera, doing videos for you guys. Uh, in addition to that, also doing my short videos for uh, Instagram. By the way, if you're not subscribed to me on Instagram, do that because uh, there is so much content that I put on Instagram that does not show up on Facebook. And if you are all about Facebook and only Facebook and not Instagram, make sure you're watching my story because what I post on Instagram, now that Facebook and Instagram are, you know, the same company because Facebook bought Instagram, then what you post on Instagram now gets uploaded onto Facebook if you connect your accounts, which I have. So you're going to see the stuff that I put on Instagram showing up on Facebook. But if you're not following my stories on Facebook, definitely follow my stories on Instagram. And if you're not on Instagram, definitely follow my stories on Facebook because there's a ton of content that I put up every day on my story that I'm not putting on my regular feed. So do check that out. You're going to see like super cute videos of Lulu, um, lots of quotes that I put up there that I don't put on. I don't, you know, all of this stuff, like, let me see this. All this stuff is all on my story that you're not seeing on my feed. So make sure you're checking me out, either my story on Facebook or my story on Instagram, because there's just lots and lots of stuff that I put on there. Um, and then what else is happening? Uh, just really trying to create like some more videos. I, I didn't even make my podcast yesterday cause it's just all of the stuff just keeps popping up and it keeps kind of distracting me and sidetracking me, which is unfortunate. And I'm, I'm trying to sort of align all of these puzzle pieces that I'm trying to create at the same time. And, and so you might notice, you know, usually I try to get a video out every week, like last week I missed are live on here on Facebook, but just really trying to make sure that I'm staying on top of everything. And I'm finding that the one thing that's sort of falling by the wayside while I try to keep up with the other stuff is my blog. But I did start a new blog recently, um, and I'm going to be getting into that and finishing that up and posting it so that you guys have some fresh content to read from me. So that's going to be coming. Um, and then I've been doing some thinking about long distance relationships because I find that I'm getting a lot of questions in relation to long distance relationships. Hi, Paul. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so I've, you know, I'm noticing that I'm getting a lot of people that are popping up and, and, and really part of the reason I think is because my, my reach is getting pretty wide. Like I said, people from Vietnam, 
Uh, I have clients in Australia, which is so cool, but makes me a little bit sleepless because in order for me to talk to them at nine o'clock at night, I have to get up at six o'clock in the morning. Um, but so, so when it comes to long distance relationships and, and long distance relationships are happening more and more frequently because, you know, when you go on dating sites, you really kind of expand your reach quite a bit. And, and you can find somebody that you really like, that you're compatible with, who is not in the same city as you. And the question is, what do you do? What do you do when that happens? What do you do if you fall for somebody who's long distance? What are things that you need to, to remember? What are some tips that you need in order to not get caught up in a scam, which on online dating scams are so, so frequent, um, which is really the frustration that I see a lot of people go through when it comes to online dating. Um, but they are, you know, they're meeting people who are fake. Um, and unfortunately, some people find out too late that someone is fake. They find out after they've fallen for them. They find out after they've sent them money. Um, so there's a lot of suckage that happens in online dating. And I want you guys to avoid that suckage. So I'm going to give you some tips that are going to help you avoid people who are scammers and, and then learn how to manage an, like an, uh, a long distance relationship. So first of all, how do you avoid the scammers when you're online? Uh, make sure, ladies, ladies, I'm, I'm talking to you right now. Make sure, first of all, that you don't reply to anybody who's using a copy and paste introductory message. How do you know if it's a copy and paste? Well, it's not going to have any kind of detail relating to what you've written in your bio. And by the way, if you need help with your bio, if you find that you've been online and you feel like you've been online for too long, please get me to help you with your dating bio. I can help you pick the right picture. I can help you write your bio. Uh, I just helped somebody rewrite their bio yesterday, turning it into something that at the end of every short paragraph was something funny because then it keeps the person reading and interested and intrigued in who they are. And that first line should be catchy too. So if you need help with your bio, if you find that you're not attracting the kind of person that's right for you, definitely reach out to me. Let's, let's work together. Let's create something that's going to work better for you. So do not reply to anything that is a copy and paste message. So if it's not saying anything about what you've written in your bio, chances are he hasn't read it. And this is somebody who's going from one profile after another profile after profile after profile using the same hi honey how are you or hi beautiful how's your day um, you know or just just hi beautiful right if it's short and unrelated to you then it is it's not related to you it has nothing to do with you this is just a lazy person who's copy and pasting and basically just throwing a line out into the lake and seeing if something is going to catch over and over and over again do not be the one who takes the line. You should have a higher standard than somebody who is showing you a low level of effort. Keep that in mind. Um, so once you know, you're know you like deleting those ones, so once you have the mindset that I'm not going to respond to anything that is not a quality level of attention, now you're focusing in on the ones who are actually reading your profile, which means, can I tell you, you are saving a ton of time because if you're not falling for profiles, which is, I'm not going to say falling for people, I'm going to say falling for profiles because fakers are creating fake profiles with fake pictures, writing fake bios about their fake jobs and their fake amount of money. If you're not reading that and falling for it, think about the minutes that you're not wasting on these kinds of people. So you're saving so much time. You're brain is relaxing. Now you're really focused on the ones that are going to show some focus towards you. So you've eliminated the noise and the static. And now what's left are the people who are really genuine. You don't know they're genuine quite yet. Again, all you're looking at is a profile. So somebody writes you something that taps into what you've written in your bio. Great. Go take a look at their profile. He looks good. He looks attractive. He looks interesting. 
this is this is the kind of person that I'm looking for. He he seems to have the same sense of humor, maybe, or the same interest. So you're going to reply back. But again, be cautious. You don't know if this is a fake person or not. So tip number two, get it live as soon as possible. So you want to move it from typing to a video chat as soon as possible. And by the way, guys, I'm gonna have video dating, um, video speed dating coming soon. It's gonna be coming in January. I know some of you guys did the test with me that did not go well. Apparently they did a bunch of changes before it was my turn to do the testing and just we just had problems. But those are getting fixed. There's a lot more testing that's going on. We are looking to launch in January. So all of you people in Ottawa, all of you people in Winnipeg, all of you people in the US who are saying, you need to bring speed dating here. All you people in Toronto, you need to bring speed dating here. I am going to be going virtual with my speed dating. It will be the same concept as when you come to a physical event with me, but it's just gonna be online. So that's gonna be really interesting. But what you wanna do when you are online dating and you meet somebody is get them to go on camera with you as soon as possible because you want to get that face to face why because you want to make sure they're real it's as simple as that so use your phone guys this do the video chat options use your phone use your laptop whatever whatever have a tidy background um you know dress up feel good and and treat it like you would like a first date except it's a video date so if they don't want to go on video with you that is a red 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 flag if they don't want to get on video with you and they don't want to meet in real life like say you're like okay fine you don't want to do video and that, that's okay not everybody feels technologically adept and that is totally fine. If you don't wanna go on video, then let's meet up for a coffee. Get in real life, see the person. You need to assess whether or not they're true before you even start believing anything else that they're gonna say. Now let's say they don't wanna get on video, but they're not in the same city, so you can't just quickly get together for a, well, I say coffee, but really what I mean is a walk. You guys know how how I function. Hey, Sharika, you guys know how I work. I, I don't necessarily want your first date to be an interview. I would prefer it that you would go for a walk together because that would be so much more natural. You're going to fall into each other's energy much faster. It's not going to be so awkward. Those silences aren't going to be uncomfortable because you're not going to be staring each other down, waiting for the other person to come up with something interesting. And I mean, can you imagine? I, I know you can. I know you felt the pressure of trying to come up with something interesting, you know, so, and or you're just going to ask the same thing. And when you're sitting across from somebody, it's hard to not interview them. So, you know, how old are you? How many kids do you have? What do you do for work? Do you own your own home? Um, I, you know, it, it, the conversation should be more organic rather than just an interview and pounding out whether you're aligning on certain issues. Um, so get together face to face if they're not in the same city, they don't want to go on camera. Goodbye. Don't waste any time on that person because there's too many obstacles. There's the distance, there's the inability or the unwillingness, whatever it is. So don't get caught up in a pretty picture and, and a nice bio that gives you the impression of somebody who has maybe a lot of money, um, who you know has a nice home, has a nice car, like maybe there's some pictures of that kind of thing. Do not get caught up on the cell you want to get into reality as quickly as possible. Now, you meet somebody online, you say, let's, let's get on camera because they're at a distance away. And, you know, I was talking to somebody recently and she was chatting with somebody who lived in Vancouver and she lived in Winnipeg. So, you know, like, so, you know, what do you do? after you get them on camera, after you start getting to know them, after you start maybe making regular dates and you really start getting into each other, 
It starts falling into a pattern of regular conversations, really, really getting to know each other, starting to lean into each other. Now you're developing feelings. How can you sustain this? How can you create something out of this? And I want you to keep in mind that when it comes to a long distance relationship, ultimately somebody has to move. So it is a really good idea in the beginning of, of starting this communication, of finding out what sort of life they have and how difficult it would be for them to move versus how difficult it would be for you to move. Because you, you know, even though you might not ask directly at that time because it might be too early, I want you to start thinking at the back of your head, who is able to bridge the gap? Who can close that distance? Is it you because you don't have kids? Uh, and your job is flexible and you can work from home? Is it him because he doesn't have kids and his job is flexible and he can work from home? Uh, you know, because if you have children that you would never take away from, from their father, right? If, if you just can't even imagine not being in a position where your children's father can see them every other weekend, uh, you know, at the very least, that kind of thing, uh, your job, is something that you love, but it's not flexible enough for you to be able to move somewhere. And you talk to somebody who's in the same situation. They're a good grounded father who co-parents really well with their ex. They cannot imagine taking their ex's children away from them and not, not you know, creating so much distance that, that the children and their mom wouldn't be able to connect on a regular basis, you know, physically and their job doesn't allow them to move, you are in a conundrum. So you may fall in love with each other, but where is this relationship going to go if neither of you are in a position to move? So be sure if you are going to even entertain the idea of a long distance relationship, that either you or the person you may start this with will be flexible enough to bridge the gap and close that distance but that would be down the road. So what do you do in the meantime while you're building things? How can you create intimacy within your relationship? Well, <laughs> look at all this love. How do you create intimacy in your relationship if there is a physical distance between you that is not easy to bridge? So here's where the love language quiz comes in super handy. When you understand each other's love language, then it means that you can bridge that gap with a way that fills up their love bank and keeps them feeling connected. And you can give them insight. Hey, Adam. <laughs> and you can give them insight into how to fill up your love bank. Because I'm going to tell you guys a story. When my husband and I first got together, you know, I worked, I worked nights and he worked days. And we didn't spend a whole lot of time together and we could sometimes go like days without seeing each other. And, you know, and even when we diss each other, it was just for a few hours here and there, sometimes 20 minutes. Like, it, you know, like I missed him. I missed him a lot. I would have loved more of his presence. And when I would see him, I'd say, oh, baby, did you miss me? And he'd go, oh no, I was too busy. And it would just, it would kill me because that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear that he went through the same pain I did and the same yearning I did. And to get this answer that was very honest felt very unsatisfactory. And so words of affirmation is one of my love languages. So for me, I have two physical affection and words of affirmation. My husband is two, which is physical affection and acts of service. He is a man of few, few words, so few words. So I would say, Adam says, love language is key. Going days without seeing each other would kill me. Mm. So I'd say, baby, did you miss me? No, I was too busy. So I'd say, okay, this is not good. This is not feeling good. I need you to say, you miss me, even if you didn't. Um, because... And by the way, lying is perfectly fine in a relationship. Little white lies, you know, serious lies, absolutely not. I, I don't stand behind that. But little white lies, um, like, baby, did you miss me? Yes, I did, right? Those are actually really healthy. We 
are not designed to be 100% truthful. As human beings, we are actually designed to lie to facilitate our ability to mesh well with each other, right? And, and I mean, case in point, right? It makes me feel better about my husband when he lies about missing me. So why lies are actually healthy for human beings. It is natural. Mother Nature designed us that way. So don't be mad at me because I'm teaching my husband how to lie. I'll, I'll help you teach your man how to lie. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll help you teach your woman how to lie. Because sometimes it just is good. Sometimes a lie is better. So I would, I would get my husband to say that he did miss me because it helped me feel like that distance was bridged. But I'm going to tell you something. He taught me something super, super valuable. And I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe men and women, maybe you can weigh in on this. Maybe give me some feedback about this so I can get more than just this one woman's opinion and more than just that one man's opinion. But my husband said, and he goes, I don't understand this missing thing because you're always with me. Even when I'm at work, even when I'm busy, you're still like, you're right here. Your presence is never away from me. And I get that now. I really do because I have a better understanding about how his and mine, my energy are very connected. And one of the ways that I know how connected we are energetically is when he's kissing and holding me and I let my brain just my like just all of my energy I let it all come in and just come into myself and then I feed it into my heart I create a love sensation and then I push that towards him every single time I do that this is what he does mm. and he makes this sweet little sound and guys I'm gonna tell you like I have done some mind-blowing spiritual things. I have felt another person's energy, like a stranger's energy, somebody that I never met. All I knew was his name, how old he was, what city he was in. And by feeling their energy, I was able to tell somebody else that he had an amputation. Like It blows my mind what we are capable of when they say we only use 20% of our brain they're not joking. We have massive capabilities if we use them, if we decide to calm our minds, open up those channels in our brain, focus it on a specific tasks, and direct all of our energy towards achieving it. We absolutely will. I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, there is so much stuff that I teach people how to do that they make happen. Um, but, you know, this, this whole concept again of long distance relationships they really can be bridged by connecting our energy it's just really important to find that person who's willing to lean in with you do a love language quiz so that you understand each other's love language so you can bridge that gap while you're building intimacy while you're getting to know each other if you know what their love language is you know, let's say it's quality time. How can you exercise quality time over a long distance relationship? You can make sure that you're scheduling FaceTimes together on a regular basis that are not spaced too far apart. You know, as often as you can, get those FaceTimes in, get those video chats in. Um, send them text messages throughout the day, just letting them know, you know, what's going on in your life so they don't feel so disconnected um, between your chats so that they kind of feel like they're walking through your life with you. That's a great way to bridge the gap for a quality time love language. What if it's gifts? Well, you know, you think about what it is that they want, what they need. You go buy that at the store. You make it yourself. You wrap it up. You send it in the mail. There you go. What is if it's physical affection? That's a tough one to bridge over distance. But if you can speak to your yearning, I wish I could kiss you. I wish I could cuddle you. I wish you were here beside me right now so that we could be together and snuggle. I imagine you spooning me at night. Like those kinds of things, it, it gets the imagination going. And it, it kind of, you know, even though you're not getting that physical affection, 
you still feel like there's a yearning for it, there's a want for it. And that knowledge in itself can bridge, or not bridge, but fill your love bank. Uh, you know, acts of service. Well, if you know that your partner um, maybe is behind in their housework, then maybe you can buy a voucher for a local house cleaner and then and send it to them and go, here, I got you something. When you're ready to have somebody help you with your housework, just use this. Um, you know, with any kind of service, right? If if it's somebody who maybe has like an injury, but it's it's snow time, then you can check with like local maintenance companies and say, hey, can I get you to go shovel a driveway and, and just like pay that? So you can still bridge acts of service over distance by tapping into things that they need to have done and then getting them vouchers for having somebody do that for them. Um, and then words of affirmation, well, that's so easy. It's so easy when it's a long distance relationship. All you need to do is tell them what you love and appreciate about them, what makes you happy about them, what, what makes them special in your eyes. So understanding what another person's love language is means that distance doesn't need to be an obstacle. But just keep in mind, at some point, somebody needs to move. I'm going to, you know, in, introduce one of my rules here. So you guys know that my dating rule is no kissing for three months. Does three months count when it's a long distance relationship? I'm going to say yes. You know, why not? Why not? If you've been messaging each other, if you've been plugged into each other for three months, if you feel you're getting the attention that you need, if your love bank is being filled over three months, then, you know, if you meet that person at the three month mark, have a first kiss. It's all good. Go for it. Do make sure, though, that they are introducing you to their friends. They're introducing you to their family. Do not be a secret ever. Don't ever kiss anybody who has not opened their world up to you. Kissing is not an introduction. Kissing is sealing the deal. And if you don't have enough information about who they are, where they live, what their house looks like, who their friends are, if there's no introduction to his life, do not kiss and seal the deal because even if it's been months and months, if those things aren't ticked off, then you will still be kissing a stranger. There, this is still a risky thing. And I'm telling you guys, this no kissing for three months rule is your insurance policy. Adam, thank you. I got a big compliment here. Such a brilliant, amazing, beautiful woman. Thank you. Um, guys, when you get a compliment, always say thank you. Never negate it. Um, and so... Oh my God, Adam, you made me lose my <laughs> train of thought. Ooh. Um, let me see. Making sure you're meeting their friends and family. Oh, right. And moving in. Here we go. So the no kissing for three months, that's, that's a dating rule as to who you're going to commit, right? Because kissing for women, I know not necessarily for men, but kissing for women really pulls them in, seals the deal. That's the first rule. The second one is when you should move in together. And my rule for moving in together or, or doing what I call um, melding, right? So, you know, two people, one house. Uh, two people, one pet, right? Melding, two people maybe having a joint bank account or maybe using a credit card together. Any kind of melding should not happen before one year, 365 days. Because what I want you to do before you give up your home and move in with them, or before you let them give up their home and move in with you, what I want you to do is ascertain whether or not you can go through ups and downs together. Because you will have a honeymoon period where things are pretty peachy, and then you may go through an insecurity phase where it's like, I feel so invested. My feelings are so invested. Now I'm holding on tight. Um, I'm feeling insecurity, which is basically a fear of loss. Insecurity, jealousy is very much a fear of loss. So, you know, after that courtship phase, that honeymoon phase, then, then you know, that's a high. And then you hit the insecurity phase. That's a low. Maybe you get through that phase. You, you get some more solid footing you're going back up on a high, but then your baggage is gonna start coming out. 
all your past conditioning, what happened in your past relationships that you're afraid is going to happen in this one, all of this stuff can start spilling out into the relationship. And I call that vomiting your past into your present. And this is very common. Again, this is why I wrote the book, Fix That Shit. Um, so, you know, guys, really, two books that we're, that we're talking about here is No More Assholes, right? So the vetting process, no matter where you are, even if it's a long-distance relationship, No More Assholes is going to help you vet. It's going to help you find that generous long-term thinker and get those selfish short-term thinkers out of your sight because you don't need them. And then fix that shit is how you get to a relationship where there is zero, zero fighting. This is the unpack your baggage phase. And by the way, the one that gets you through the insecurity phase is after the first kiss. I don't have a copy here, otherwise I'd show it to you. But I really do cover you in every single phase of relationships, whether you're breaking up or, or just kind of wondering what else is out there or you're vetting, no more assholes, or you're getting through the insecurity phase after the first kiss, or you're unpacking that emotional baggage that you've been vomiting to the relationship, you're gonna fix that shit. Um, so it, it really is important that you allow the relationship go through ups and downs before you do the melding phase, before you allow either of you to give something up and, and come together because here's what happens when you melt. It makes it more difficult to break up. If you've been dating each other for four, five, six, seven months, and somebody gives up their apartment and moves in, and then all this baggage is coming up, you're vomiting, he's vomiting, you know, all this fighting is happening, and, and you're seeing that you're not compatible, you're really feeling that you're not compatible, you start feeling that this is not the relationship for you, it is much more difficult to end a relationship, to have a clean cut, you know, with an, a, a decent period of time if somebody has to go find a new apartment, right? So I don't want you to meld too quickly because I don't want you to complicate a breakup if a breakup needs to happen. So I don't want you to rush. I don't want you to go too fast. I want you to go through ups and downs so that you can see how you experience those ups and downs. Do you carry each other through ups and downs or are you pulling each other even further down? Is, are you functional about how you face challenges or do challenges make you fall completely apart because neither of you are equipped to deal with challenges? You need to find this out before you meld, before somebody moves in with somebody else. So even if it's a long distance relationship, do wait a full year before you do that melding, before you move in together. So um, I don't see any questions from you guys. Uh, I'm hoping that you found what I said tonight to be super, super helpful. Uh, so since there's no more questions and all we got is these lovely compliments, which as always, Thank you, you guys, and the hearts and love. I always appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to sign off for tonight, and we are going to come back on next Tuesday. So if anything happens in your life, um, if anything happens in your life, if you need clarification for anything, if you need help with anything, do reach out to me. Uh, take advantage of these live broadcasts because these are great learning opportunities, not just for you, but for everybody. Thank you for the love, Rebecca. Love you, love you, love you so much. And I'm gonna see you guys uh, Mondays at noon, live on Instagram, Tuesdays at eight o'clock, live right here on Facebook. I love you guys, I'm gonna talk to you soon.